post. You know what it is. Post up. <laughs> Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So last night on the podcast, had a great time as we usually do. And shame on some of you who don't partake in the podcast. And I get it. It, it. A lot of you are only interested in Washington commander's content. And if it doesn't directly pertain to the commanders, you don't care. And that's fine uh, to each its own. But a lot of times on the podcast, we end up talking about the commanders. So it behoove you to check out the podcast from time to time. But nonetheless, last night in particular, uh, we had a spirited debate and discussion um, about Jaden Daniels agent and <clears throat> him having a cryptic tweet um, that pertained to pro, pro football talks, Mike Florio talking about the commander's uh, recent top 30 visit, official visit with the quarterbacks and all of them being there at the same time. So I shared my thoughts on that. Um, for those of you who um, didn't see the tweet, didn't hear the soundbite, I'm going to play that for you here in a second. And then followed by my reaction to all of this. It was a very passionate response. Take it for what it's worth and you take it how you like. Uh, also, I made a statement in this video that um, may rub some people the wrong way about Jaden Daniels and whether he wants to be here or not. Whatever the case may be. I, it's funny, I made the statement having not seen anything corroborating this other than just knowing that he has a preference of where he'd like to go and it's not Washington. And then I've seen people tweet things out. He could have refuted it. He didn't. Instead, he deflected. So it, it gives me the sense that he doesn't really want to be here. But I'm going to play a soundbite for you that kind of speaks to that as well. And I saw this coincidentally enough, after I made the comments that I made. But I know I'm not crazy, and I told you this is what I do, right? I, I see everything, I read context clues, body language, all that stuff, and so it's not hard, right? When, you, when you're looking for things and you find what you're looking for, but it doesn't matter what he wants to do. This isn't free agency, okay? At the end of the day, he doesn't get to choose where he goes. I mean, he can balk at it, but he's not going to do that. He doesn't strike me as that type of guy. Anyway, here's what you need to know. Here's everything that kind of sparked this conversation. I'm going to play that for you. I'm going to show you it as well. And then you're going to hear from me. And then um, I'll respond to that afterwards. Take a listen. It seems dysfunctional to me on the surface to do that. And I know that somebody reported that Adam Peters, they did that in San Francisco. I, I mean... I feel like this is just, well, the owner's available this day and he wants to meet with all these guys, so this is the day we want them all to be here. Why would you dilute your ability to get maximum time and, and just an opportunity to evaluate? You're trying to evaluate four guys at once because the, the glass half full story is we well, want to see how they interact with each other. But you're, you're, you know, you're trying to keep track of these four different guys. Like, why would you not? You've got 30 of these visits you can do. Why would you not bring them in one at a time and have maximum opportunity to get to know them individually? I, I, I don't understand that either. I mean, I, I really don't. It's, it's definitely odd to me. First off, why, who, why do we care about what, how they four would interact together? Like, they're not going to be together. So who the hell cares? <laughs> they're never going right? to be together like, again. Well, who this the hell it. cares? I, I mean, the, the, so, at the draft, maybe. That, but no, some of them aren't even going to be at the no, draft. It makes, so that makes no sense at all. Smack City, thank you for the Super Chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB, who writes, thoughts on JD agent situation? Um... <laughs> So, yeah, I, I saw it. I had multiple people send it my way. And um, shout out to everybody that sent it to me. Keep me abreast of these things. But it was cryptic in nature. I don't like to get involved in these. Th this is, I think, fans get too involved in shit that doesn't really matter at, at the end of the day. What an a agent does on social media doesn't impact his client per se but so for those let me back up for those of you who don't know what uh smack city is referring to 
Jaden Daniels's agent reposted, he quoted a, a video that was put out by Mike Florio. First of all, you are already in violation if you're commenting on anything that Mike Florio has to say about the commanders because he clearly doesn't like this organization. He had a hard on for us when we were the Redskins and when Daniel Snyder was here. And, and, and even though we, we were both, we both shared the same adversary and we both wanted the same thing. He wasn't on my team, right? Pro, Mike Florio and pro football talk can't stand the Washington organization, whether we're the Redskins and they were always all over us when we were the Redskins, the football team are now the commanders. They don't give a shit about us. Never have and probably never will for whatever reason. And I don't care because I don't like you either. That said, we did share the same adversary and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So there was a brief period in time where we were amicable, but that has come and gone now that Daniel Snyder is no longer here. And I am back to no longer giving two shits about anything that Mike Florio has to say about this organization. That said, he sort of echoed the sentiments that I had. And a lot of people didn't like what I had to say, uh, but I'm sticking to my guns. I don't like this group uh, way of doing things, but that's their philosophy. That's what they did in San Francisco. It worked. It worked. Sure it did. I don't know if it did or not, but if that's what they want to do, whatever. I'm, I don't care as long as the results are favorable for us. And I've made that abundantly clear. I don't give a shit if they have 20 guys there at once, three or just one, which is the traditional route. Just get it right. That's all I care about. I want to win. And I snapped yesterday in talking about this because I just want to win. And too many people get caught up in all the extra shit that happens. And, and all I care about is what the on-field product looks like. But Mike Florio and Chris Sims were having a conversation about Washington hosting all of these different quarterbacks, four of them. All at once, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., um, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels were all there together, and they weren't alone. There were others. Chop Robinson and all these other guys were there too. They had a bunch of guys there at once. They took them out to Top Golf and showed them a good time. Yeah. <clears throat> that shit is trash to me because to me, the sole purpose of a visit is to extract as much information out of a prospect as one can. And the best way to do that is to divulge every resource that you have to that said prospect, not divvying up your attention, your time, or your resources to other guys that are in the building at the same time, but just focusing in on this one guy especially when you're talking about the number two overall pick and the quarterback. So they kind of said that this makes no sense. It's dumb. Uh, what, what is Washington doing here? I know. And so I've heard this from multiple um, outlets, including Daniel Jeremiah, who said one of the reasons teams do this sometimes is that the owner wants to meet these prospects and, and his availability is limited. So instead of having your owner have to be there four or five different times, you just have everybody come at once so the owner can be there on a day that, that makes sense for him. And it's more efficient that way. I mean, I guess. I, I still don't love it. It's not going to change my mind and make me like that philosophy. I still think it's trash. But again, I don't give a shit. Just get it right. So Florio and Sims pretty much said this is dumb. Like another thing that people kept saying is you, you, you want to see who's the alpha. You want to put these guys there together. And I said yesterday that that shit was stupid too, because again, this isn't a dick measuring contest. Who cares about who's the alpha of the group? They're never going to be on the same team. Who cares? This is a fact finding mission that these top 30 visits are supposed to be not who's the best alpha of the group. Who's going to be able to 
look the other in the eye and say, I'm the best. That's trash. That's what you do with the combine and all that shit. <clears throat> and these guys don't even put, compete there anyway. I want to get all the information that is necessary out of these prospects. And that's what this visit is supposed to do. And I don't think you can do that necessarily at your highest peak performance when you've got others there. That's my opinion. And that was their opinion. And <clears throat> to that, Jaden Daniels' um, agent left a, like, thinking emoji, like, questioning, like, hmm. So that's cryptic because he could be agreeing with them, saying, yeah, that was kind of bogus that y'all had my guy there, Jaden Daniels, there with three other quarterbacks and a slew of other prospects for their top 30 visit at the same time. We didn't have anybody else do that to us. It shows that you truly don't want my client if that's how you feel about bringing him in for this visit. He could be saying it that way, or he could be going, hmm, I think y'all are reading too much into this and it's cool and I'm not tripping. Most people took it as the former and not the latter. Like, yeah, that was pretty bogus how they did it, but it is what it is. Washington fans, I went to the comment section because this is what I always do. Because I'm a lurker. I don't say shit. I just see what everybody else says. And they were all up in arms. Well, th that does it for him. I guess we're taking Drake May. I'm like, y'all shut up. Fans are so fickle. You know, because if they draft Jaden Daniels on draft day, they're going to be jumping up and down. And they're going to be the first ones online buying JD5 jerseys. Shut up. Okay. I, I guess that means we're taking Drake May now. You're doing your client a huge disservice right now. Sit down and shut up. That's what y'all need to do. Do I like that his agent is online sending out cryptic messages? No, I don't care, though. Because guess what? Jaden Daniels could fire his agent two days after the draft. I don't give a shit. The point is, Washington did something unconventional. People had an opinion. That's what happens when you do something unconventionally. People have an opinion. They had an opinion. I don't like them. So I very much so wanted to disagree with their take and say, y'all shut up. Don't nobody care about what y'all got to say. I actually agreed with them. But it doesn't matter if I agreed with them or not. The agent sending a, a cryptic tweet, all it does is just add fuel to the fire unnecessarily but again i don't give a shit that's it's not going to change what washington does it's not going to change i i can tell you this right now Jaden daniels doesn't want to be in washington there i said it he'll go there if we take him he's never going to come out and say it but he there are other destinations that i bet he'd much rather go to than washington you just pointed it out. They have a lot of picks. They have a lot of other work to do. If they'd made up their minds, Jaden yeah. Daniels is my quarterback, they don't need to spend the rest of this entire day with, with uh, J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix. I don't understand it, Mel. Is it possible that they have, uh, have viewed these guys differently than we do? I can't believe they have, but you never know. I mean, we said all along, opinions vary in the National Football League. You're not looking for Mr. Congeniality here or personality contest. Bottom line, who the best player is, okay? <laughs> who the best player is? Jane Daniels came back to LSU and galvanized that football team and was a great leader. And Malik Neighbors, his numbers went through the roof after uh, 2022 from 2023. So to me, you take the best player. And obviously, if Jane wants to be a Raider, maybe he's doing things, say, I really don't want to be here, whatever. But this is National Football League. Like I said, you don't dictate policy to an organization. To me, Jaden Daniels is the best prospect at the position of need. They have all these extra picks anyway. They don't, it's not like they're, they only have four or five draft choices here. They have two twos early and three threes. So they have plenty of opportunities in this draft early on within the top 100 picks to solidify need areas and improve this roster. So moving down may would make no sense. If they didn't have those picks, I'd say, yeah, maybe, but yeah. not with a quarter. Yeah. You do not fool with the quarterback, most importantly important position in sports, you got to take the guy that you deem the best, regardless of what he says, I don't want here, I want there, who cares? You're a Washington commander, okay? You'll be great here, you'll love it here, 
We're going to make it work. We're going to win a Super Bowl. We're going to be great. End of story. And I'd put money on that. However, it is what it is. And if they decide to take him, I don't think they're going to take him. I don't. But if they decide to take him, I am on board. I love his game. And I can't wait to see him in a commander's jersey carving up the NFC East. Too many fans get in their feelings and they want to pick a side. And because they pick a side, now the other side has to suck and they have to demean the other side. Can't we all just get along? Lang Hughes. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Lang Hughes writes, you see JD's agent retweet. Seems like visit was thumbs down. I, we just talked about it. I saw it, and um, that's the way I feel about it, honestly. Um, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I think this is a, it's, I think it's less, I think the agent is going to take the brunt of this conversation, and he's going to take a lot of flat for a simple emoji that could be interpreted in a multitude of ways. I think he's going to be the scapegoat, but really where the, the blame should be placed is on Washington. Right. If, if, if and, and I, and I don't even say blame because they didn't do anything wrong. They just did it their way. Shout out to condo P miss Perry sent me a, uh, a well thought out tweet, a couple of well thought out tweets on the subject matter of the, 30 visit with all of the quarterbacks and all the different prospects going out to top golf, et cetera, et cetera. And I like to show you all of the sides of a conversation, not just my side or the other side or what may have you. I want to give you all perspectives, all angles, and let you make your own decision. Again, I want you guys thinking for yourselves. I don't expect you to agree with every single take that I have, right? That's the kind of environment that I hope we've successfully cultivated here is that we can agree to disagree with one another on, on topics and still have a great time and be family, right? So uh, Ms. Perry sent me these tweets here that I'm about to show you guys. And I think they're well done. I think um, I agree with every single word of what's being said here, except and I'm going to talk about it here. Let's read these tweets from at Commander's Crew, uh, who did a phenomenal job of kind of explaining how they feel about this whole situation with the visits and whatnot. What's getting overblown is the fact that they took these guys out for a fun night together and the media blew it up into this manufactured absurdity. They took these guys out together for a relaxed, fun night away from the same shit they've been doing over and over. They prepare for. I think it was brilliant to take them out of that arena and see them as regular guys. Tells you a lot because it's not rehearsed. Again, all of that is actual factuals. I love it. He continues, QBs are going to face situations they haven't seen before, and they have to react to them. The format of this visit was one they haven't seen before. Who says Washington has to follow the same pattern as everyone else? And I've mentioned that already. They did something unconventional, and that's why people lost their shit, including myself. I didn't really lose my shit as much as I just didn't really see the benefit of this. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. He says, they just stole a rock star from the NFL front office um, to work in their game day booth when no one else was looking in that direction. This ain't Dan and Bruce operating here. It's different, and that's good. And that is probably the most profound statement in all of this. This ain't Dan and Bruce anymore. This is a whole new operation under new management. And this shit feels immaculate. It feels amazing. Okay. That said, all of this is fine, well, and dandy. And I agree with every single word of this. If, if you already know who you're taking. This conversation that we've had surrounding these quarterbacks is Washington is undecided. Nobody knows what they're doing. They don't even know what they're doing yet. These visits are going to be um, really instrumental in helping them decide what they're going to do. If that is the truth, 
They don't know what they're doing yet. They aren't sure who they're taking. If they still are undecided, you can't convince me that this group setting was the right way to go about trying to get as much information out of these prospects as you can at the quarterback position. Seeing them in their natural element, relaxed, away from the structured nature of what's been going on for the last three months, I get that. And I understand that concept. And it's a brilliant idea on the surface, right? But I still want to know, because th this is great, and who they are as people is something that you also take into consideration. But ultimately, what they do on the football field, it's what's going to determine whether this is a successful decision that you're about to embark upon or not. And if you don't know that, you need to be extracting as much information out of these prospects. And to me, the most efficient way to do that is to bring them in individually, not as a group. Take it for what it's worth. But I do love this perspective here. I think... That is something that you should take into consideration. If you've already decided, like, let's see how this guy really interacts in, in a normal environment. Like, we already know we're taking him. So let's just see how he interacts with his peers. Okay, great. I love it. That's To me, that's next level thinking if that's what the situation is. We don't know because they've told us this entire time we don't know who we're taking. If And I've, I've pushed back against that. I think they do know. They're just not telling us. And I don't want them to tell us. And they should be acting as if they don't know. But I think they've known for quite a while what they wanted to do. And this whole setup kind of feels like a continuation of that. But again, I could be wrong about that. They might not know who they're taking. And if they don't, then I think doing all of this isn't the most efficient use of your time. That's just how I feel. But in any event, I thought I'd throw this out there and, and, and give you another perspective to consider. I think if there's a conversation here to be had, it should be whether Washington did this the right. They had a month to spread this shit out, to wait until a week before the draft to bring all of your guys at once. It's, it's ridiculous. I get that the owner wants to be involved. Okay, we'll pick four different days during this month that your owner is available and have him meet these prospects. And then when you bring the rest of them, you can bring them all here in, at one time. Bring all the offensive linemen, all the edge rushers, all the corners, all the linebackers, all the tight ends that you have, that you have currently coming for a bit. Bring them all at once. Who gives a shit? We wouldn't be having this conversation if, if it was just those guys and not the quarterbacks. The only reason that this is a conversation is because we're about to make a potential franchise-altering decision and you didn't treat them as such. You lumped at them. You lumped them together as if they were no more than a fifth round guard. He's no, you just essentially said our potential number two overall pick at the quarterback position, the guy that we hope is going to come in and change the fortunes of our franchise. He's no different than a seventh round corner. Or a fifth round guard. And for some people, they say, that, that's the point. You don't want your quarterback to feel like he's better than anybody else on the roster. Well, guess what? When we start placing blame on the quarterback or giving him praise, it ain't the same as the fifth round guard or the seventh round corner or the third round linebacker. The shit ain't the same. Okay? It's never the same when you're talking quarterback. So miss me with this. It, 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 the guy should be treated equal. And, and I think this is a great idea. No, it's not. Sorry. But <clears throat> again, I said this already. I'll say it again. And you can get bent out of shape like you did when I said what I said yesterday, if you like. I don't give a shit. I just want the results to be in our favor. That's all I care about. I don't give a damn if they bring all 30 visits at once. As long as we get this shit right. If they get it wrong, what they've done is they've opened themselves up to criticism. And that's why, why I say this is stupid. But again, it's not for them to worry about what we think. And I'm glad they don't give a shit what we think. Okay?
The last time this organization gave a shit about the fans, like really, they they rescinded the the head coaching offer from Jim Fossil and they gave it to Jim Zorn. How'd that work out for us? So we can be up in arms or people like myself can question them, but I've already told you, I don't give a shit. I'm going to let them rock because guess what? The way we've done things for 25 years here hasn't worked. So I'm open to new and innovative ideas. That one still doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but if you say it makes sense and you've done it this way and it has gotten you results, I'm all for it. Knock yourself out. So again, how do you guys feel? I have given you my opinion. You know where I stand. What says you? Did the agent's cryptic tweet bother you in any way, shape, or form? The visit, the way they set it up, I've said my piece on that. You know how I feel. I, I'm not going to agree that it was the right way to do it, but there's no right or wrong way. They chose an unconventional manner in which to do these uh, visits, and people are going to question their methods. I question their methods, but again, all that matters is the results. And if they get... The results that we are looking for here, no one's going to be talking about this three years from now. Hell, no one will be talking about it next year if they get this right. If they don't, somebody will bring this back up. People will bring this back up. Okay? But again, who cares what we think? All I care is that they have a handle on this situation and what they're doing. And I trust Adam Peters wholeheartedly. With every fiber of my being, I trust Adam Peters. So if this is how he wants to do things, by all means, brother, do your thing. Because I'm supporting either way. So what says you? Leave it down in the comment section. Anything that I said, anything that's gone on, agents, cryptic tweet, all of that stuff, leave it down in the comment section. And don't forget, we're live tonight. I made a... Um, Announcement at the end of that podcast episode, last episode, 412. If you don't want to watch, just go to the last five minutes of that episode and you'll find out what tonight's show will entail. You don't want to miss it. You want to be a part of it. Uh, the Command Post Live tonight is going to be an epic show, so don't you miss it. And uh, if you want to know what we're going to be doing, go watch the last five minutes of the podcast episode. But in any event, that's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T., you know what it is. Post up. Take command. Make sure that you join me tonight, 8.30p for the Command Post Live. It's going to be lit. Look forward to chopping it up with you guys. Until then, you know what it is. Y'all have a good one. Louis T. Network.